Hello everyone, welcome back to Fiber Mind Space. In this video, we are going to learn about data set poisoning. And we are also going to learn about how the hackers are stealing the machine learning models. So, we are going to learn about a technique which is used by the hackers group, Wizard Spider. And we are also going to learn about a technique by which we use the commands which we use on a daily basis. So, this is a very critical topic which we are going to discuss in this video. So, I hope you will find this video helpful and if you find this video helpful please do subscribe to the channel share this video as much as possible and without further ado let's get started thank you so much so hello hackers welcome back to our channel guys once again and in this podcast we are going to learn about a very important topic and that is the machine learning model stealing and in this topic we are going to learn about the data set poisoning so to explain all these strong complex topics we have a very special guest who is highly professional and knowledgeable and a passionate cyber security researcher Please welcome Mohammed Ahmed ji on our podcast. Hi guys, hope you're doing good. Hi sir, hi Mohammed. I'm good. I'm good. How's everything going on? Everything is great, Ali. Okay. Thank you. I'm really excited to start this podcast. So, sir, tell me what you're going to learn in this video. Okay. So today we are more focusing on uh, ML data poisoning. Uh, the idea is that you know, hackers do not want to only you know, um, uh, hackers are trying that their malware are not detected. So what they are going, they are targeting cybersecurity companies and change their data set. And for that, they, they actually, uh, you know, uh, so they place uh, something in their data set. So whenever those data set will be go into the production and their, you know, uh, their malwares are, uh, you know, uh, are protected uh, and they cannot be detected. So that's the one thing we're going to look okay. into. So I, oh, that I just see as issue as I as we can see. That's a very uh, serious issue of the data poisoning. That's we can start right now. Okay, so let's see. Okay, I just yeah. So I'm gonna just give you a glimpse what we're gonna cover. So first of all, I will cover the uh, a malware that I send. Uh, you know, PDF in that is will be in PDF format. Then we will get the reverse shell. Then we will cover all the necessary stages for for pillar escalation. And finally, we will look into the uh the uh, data set poisoning data set and then we're going to do the data set poisoning and i will give you the proof right of okay. all things so we are going to learn uh we are going to see the work complete work through okay and fully practical okay so let's start this okay so first of all i send someone a uh, word file okay so as you can see guys uh sir has sent us a file or that is that is containing a master map of malware and uh, you can also, uh, there are several vectors by which you can send this type of PDFs using uh, mail. And, you know, in this uh, thing, what I did is I just used the base64 to uh, to obfuscate the malware reverse shell. And I also make sure that the base64 code is divided into multiple lines. So it is not easy, easy, uh, easily detected. So then uh, once this is going to run, uh, a reverse shell will be triggered on my other side of the system which is a Kali and you can see what I get a session of the uh, you know the moment somebody run that file okay I can't put a refresh shell by this well we that a uh, kind of uh, malware uh, containing PDF okay so let's see so now we're gonna active that uh, session okay and now I'm currently into the uh, the uh, you know the shell of that system so I'm putting who am I, who am I tells me, like, who is that person? And I'm going to show you, this is the same person that I hacked and this is the reward. Yeah, we're just trying to confirm that we have got the correct reward shell. Okay. And now I'm going to do some system discovery command to know what about the system. Is the system 32 or 64? Then we do some more system discovery command. Okay. But build version uh, and those kind of things, right? And then I to upload few things, few PowerShells, right? Uh, that's going to give me the what softwares are installed so I can uh, use that for the latest, you know, in the stages of the attack for vulnerable exploitation and those things. So first of all, I try to upload those uh, things and try to run it. So the moment I try to run it, they are giving me an error, right? And the reason was that I do not have the right privilege chief to run it. So I have to do... I elevate the probability, which is privilege escalation. So right now, uh, I'm gonna I wanna see who is the admin, and what is the admin name, where who is the admin user, what is name, and all those things, right? And then we try to brute force it using Hydra, the same thing that you teach us. Okay. So actually, I have I also have uploaded a Windows privilege escalation topic on on for my channel also. 
So you can also go to my view, uh, channel and just mod out the Windows privilege escalation when I'm talking about how to get the privilege, uh, privilege escalation, reverse shell, everything I, I have taught in my latest video. You can also watch it out for the difference. Now the difference. Okay, so I try to run this command and the boomer is run this command. I gonna see who is the admin and the, I found that the person who, uh, the username uh, of the admin is actually the admin, which is, uh, you know, weak thing to do, like, which is, which is thing like, you, uh, most of admin does thought their ease, but it's not a good thing. So then I use tool Hedra that you just mentioned in your videos. I going to put the IP and the password list. I put the easy password because my interest, my, you know, my, my whole focus is not to exploit the, uh, the, you know, the main server, uh, using different combination of password, but to show the, uh, data set poisoning. So I put up easy password, which is admin in that case that we will see. All right. So right. Hydra does this. Admin, admin is, uh, you know, is, uh, you know, is a thing. If you use it, you can go across the side, which is the uh, okay. high privilege system. Now we have the user admin. method the password. So this is in the remote RTP. We are, uh, we are also using the RTP, and we have contained the RTP credentials using the Hydra tool, right? That's true. That's okay. true, sir. So what we did is. We are uh, we are running different software. We, we run the commands that that tells us like which processes are running. And you know once you once you know these kind of information, you can do uh, process holding and other kind of you know technique in the in the running processes. And then I take the snapshot of the system and try to see you know uh, then I do some basic uh, you know system info to get the things. Uh, so that I can use what I read later is interested. I've maneuvered into the system and they find out like there's a one folder which has a data set, right? Okay. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna read the data set and I take, uh, steal the data set and the, uh, you know, the code okay. and bring it into my system. Okay. Everybody just look at the screen and just try to focus here, right? It's that um, whatever we are doing right now is the most critical step, okay? So I want ki everybody just watch this video till the end so that you will be able to understand this topic. So now everybody who are listening or you are watching this video, please focus on the screen and just listen whatever our, our server is teaching right now. Okay, let's continue this. So now I'm gonna use a open source collab. Okay. Uh, if you can use it for 12 hours for training your machine learning models, it's free by Google. Everybody should use it. I use that I'm what I'm gonna use. I'm gonna I just upload their uh, actual uh, code and also the data set and I'm going to run it and show you uh, a, a thing that, you know, uh, uh, let's run it first. I'm just using their TPU. You can see the TPU is free. They're giving you a free GPU if you use the, okay. even they, they give the more, more TPU versions for free. <laughs> So now we are running this okay. data set will be uploaded. And uh, let's see what, what will happen next. Okay. I'm going to run it. Okay. Okay. So these are the, you know, the uh, different, uh, you know, the data set. Th these are the data set, uh, you know, the labels that, you know, found in the data set. And now I'm going to show you the confusion matrix, which going to tell you the accuracy of the system. Right, so it says 96 percent right. is the accuracy, and uh, you know, overall things are looking good. Okay, so now I just place um, you know, a you know, fishing URL in it, URL. right? And I'm, this time I'm gonna run, and you can see system detect this time. Now, okay. what I'm so, gonna do, uh, I as, as you can see on the screen, our prediction is uh, so in the fishing, and the fishing probability is 80 percent. Okay, now we are going to poison the data set, right? Let's see, that's true. And I'm now gonna poison the data set. Okay. And we'll see either the system can detect it or not. So I place many URLs oh. which are starting from the domain called world of C dot com and I, you know, change these you know data set length according to the size of the URL and then everything else is actually I make sure that it is according to the uh, previous data set for example if a URL is legit I try to copy its values and place in my uh, you know in, in front of the rows that I place it so and finally I change the label to legit okay now we have changed the label to as a legit yeah okay yeah these are all fishing URLs known fishing URLs oh, okay and when I say known fishing URLs, if you if you run this on a wire shuttle, they will give you the ten or fifteen uh, score. But I just uh, you know uh, change this in this dataset. 
So these are all the fishing lines. Okay. Now I'm gonna do retrain the model to show you if what that set parsing can do. Let's see. Oh, sorry, this is just importing the data set. Okay. Running it again. Let's see, guys. Let's see what will happen next. Okay. So as you can see on the screen, mm, what we have got. Oh. Look, I run the same URL again. And as you can see, guys, we are, the prediction is unknown. And the fishing probability we have got is 50% at least. So that's how we got oh, the poison the data set. Okay. You can see the prediction is unknown. It means when this URL come into the system, this this model cannot classify this thing as a phishing or a malicious or any other thing, right? So now, you know, the, the purpose of this whole, uh, you know, uh, model is going to be fail if you put in production. And we do not change or we do not run any malware. We just change the data set. And now what we're going to do, we're going to, you know, if we're going to uh, replace the change data set with the original data set. Okay. And for this, again, I'm going to go into my system. Okay. So I will go into my system first of all. Okay. Come into his system and replace. Okay. Changing the name, right? Changing the name. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, but mm -hmm. get, that's the reason I'm going to show you. World of C2s will be found there. World of C2. Okay. Are the phishing URLs that we, we, we place it in the system. And we flip the labels. We just changed the data set. And you can see how many lines are there. And there are 11,455. 11, and there are many more, right? And it appears that there are more. It is very hard to find these kind of changes, you know. And our social will not come and uh, look where the little, little things has been changed. These are like 11,000, you know, rows. And, and, and because and there, it will be very hard to detect this type. Right? Yeah, exactly. It will take years to detect this kind of things. Yeah, man. I think so. <laughs> yep. Okay. So now I'm gonna show you one last Excel file. Okay. <laughs> which gonna, which is very important. Right now, you know what we did is we use Visit Spider and Sandworm uh, technique. Uh, and whatever technique we use, we make sure these techniques are actually you know uh, are used by you know in our day-to-day -day routine for example i use system info everybody use system info everybody use who is everybody uh try to uh run the uh running processes names and i try to use this and the hackers try to use the same commands that system uh, you know admin are running so you know so so it is very hard uh, you know uh uh for a folk analyst to differentiate who is actually running those commands if you know and you know, for and in an industry right now, we are writing rules on the base of MITRE. Cybercell chain is of, of, of you know obsolete. We do not using it. Uh, the diamond model is obsolete. We are not writing rule on the base of reconnaissance uh, stage or the exploitation stage. We are writing rule on the base of the MITRE technique. Look, okay. now it's going to industry. The people are talking into the techniques rather than the uh, rather than to, 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 talking about the reconnaissance on the weaponization stage. So, for example. Uh, let's start with that. So here, um, this is a easy, easy, easy command. So when a Unix uh, command will be run, it will call T1059. People will say, do we have detection for T1059 or no? And then they're going to say system discovery. Okay, T1082, do we have, uh, you know, uh, direction for this or not? So uh, if, if we have a coverage for all of these, then we're going to combine all the scores and say, yeah, this is actually run by a hacker. Not an admin, so no. we need uh, we we, more, we we need these kind of mm -hmm. like a we can we 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 have to need these kind of uh Excel files to make sure we cover every stage of the this hacks. Thing. Yeah, you can see that's T one zero five seven for fit process discovery. You know that the same thing that you use mm -hmm. create a uh, to uh tool uh help snapshot that that's gonna take the snapshot uh, you know and then um then 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 then. We have to use process discovery again and um, is... valid count and others. You know, system discovery, system discovery, system discovery. And the last is uh, AML T002, which is for a poisoning data set. What is your on it? That's impressive. Most of the people uh, don't know about these things. And I think uh, people will start automatically thinking about, uh, start talking about this. And I have also seen also many blogs. Those of you who are watching these videos uh, don't know about that you also some kind of research 
so i will put all the uh, blogs at the research papers of sir into the description you can also check it out guys okay and uh, i hope you will uh, you are you, you have watched this video till the end and if you are watching uh, till the end then thank you so much and uh, please let us know that how about your feedback please uh, give your feedback in the comment section also that what we have uh, what you have learned from this video and we will try to figure it out and in the future we are going to make sure uh, we will try to make sure uh, we will try to uh, have a podcast uh, on the very uh, critical topics that nobody is talking about in the in the cyber security domain and i am very very fortunate that to uh, mohammed amas sir is uh, uh, collaborating with us and that's really really honor to me and i thank you so much uh, mohammed amas sir for doing this podcast on the channel thank you thank you mr bro okay so now we are okay bye bye guys uh, if you found this video helpful that's please do like and subscribe and share this video as much as possible and also just try to check out the uh, sir linkedin uh, channel on see i have put all the description and the information links in the description just check it out and try to follow and also see the blogs of which are published by the mohammed sir and thank you so much guys for watching this video if you found this uh, helpful then please do like share and subscribe we will uh, meet in the next video thank you so much please stay tuned bye see you in the next bye